Hi, it's Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health and ready for another podcast today. In the last e-zine, we talked a lot about Barry Sears, Beaker. We talked about Barry Sears, and I've talked about Barry Sears in some former podcasts. We're going to sort of pick up where we left off on that and talk about some interesting stuff that we'll be getting into on the blog in the next uh, the next week or two. And that we've been we've been discussing this kind of thing already, but something I'm certainly thinking about a lot and delving into. Barry Sears, in his latest book, Toxic Fat, released in 2008, he refers to something that he calls the perfect nutritional storm. Now, Barry Sears, he's uh, he's really been on the cutting edge of some of the nutritional science. He's definitely a very interesting guy, and I can't say that I'm in full agreement with his theories on all things, but one of his particular theories in particular really gets my attention, and he he refers to an enzyme in the body. It's called the Delta-5 desaturase enzyme, and don't let me lose you with the big terms. Follow along, and I just want you to get the gist here, and I think you will. The delta-5 desaturase enzyme basically determines the fate of the omega-6 fatty acid that you consume, the linoleic acid specifically. So linoleic acid is very abundant in corn and soy oils, the two most uh, commonly used uh, oils now in the modern world. It's uh, high in cottonseed oil and safflower, sunflower, canola, all those kind of things usually contain quite a, uh, a large amount of omega-6. We're now consuming more omega-6 in our diets than we ever have in history. But Sears states that the fate of this omega-6 depends on this one enzyme. So basically this linoleic acid can be converted one of two ways. If the delta-5 desaturase enzyme is not activated then this funnels down and becomes a fatty acid called DGLA. I believe that's dihomogamalinoleic acid is what that stands for. Um, And it's not an inflammatory uh, uh, molecule. It's not a precursor to, you know, the most uh, powerfully inflammatory icosanoids like uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha or interleukin-6 some of those other cytokines that are derived from omega-6. The DGLA is uh, totally fine. So just consuming omega-6 doesn't mean that you're destined to become hyperinflammatory. When the delta-5 desaturase enzyme is activated, the linoleic acid, omega-6 fatty acid that you consume in your diet, is more likely to become converted into arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid, also known as AA for short, is the precursor to the inflammatory icosanoids that I just mentioned. Now, this is important because these are the first molecules that are released when there's any kind of threat. So, if there's an allergic reaction, boom, you have a huge cascade of these cytokines made from AA does a lot of damage, causes a lot of inflammation, causes a huge release of the hormone cortisol to mitigate that inflammation, uh, which intensifies insulin resistance and can cause you to gain weight and so on. Bad news. And Barry Sears is certainly focused on the hormone cortisol in his own books uh, for that very per- that very reason. And so, so that's a very important connection. So if that's really what, if the, if the delta-5 desaturase enzyme, if that controls the fate of omega-6, and we do determine indeed that, that having too much arachidonic acid in your cells does catapult you into a hyper-inflammatory state that causes all kinds of health problems, um, allergies, asthma, autoimmunity, excess chronic inflammation, the kind that can lead to heart disease, and, uh, and so on. If indeed those, uh, that overload of that fatty acid leads to all those conditions, 
then we can go back and we can trace and say that and try to figure out what activates this delta 5 desaturase enzyme. What does that? Well, Barry Sears and the whole reason for the zone diet, which is being not too low, not too high in carbohydrates, but right in the middle, just like a short spine program, right in the middle, is about not going so low in carbohydrates that you increase your cortisol levels, but not going so high in carbohydrates that your insulin levels are so high that you activate the delta-5 desaturase enzyme. Okay, so, you know, basically if you look at that information, if, if you take in a lot of omega-6 and you have, a, you know, basically high insulin levels paired with that, you're automatically going to become this massive factory of arachidonic acid. Uh, because you have the substrate for it, the omega-6, and you have the activation of the enzyme that makes that. Now, Barry Sears and most authors, they focused on postprandial insulin levels. So they basically focus in on high glycemic carbohydrates. Potatoes being, you know, you know, is the worst on the list. White bread some of these other uh, refined carbohydrates, starches in general, whereas fruits and things that contain fructose uh, have a lower glycemic rating, which is one of the reasons that Barry Sears uses sucrose to sweeten his, uh, his zone bars because he thinks that's actually preferable from a glycemic index and glycemic load perspective to be using sucrose, which is 50% fructose, and causes a lower blood sugar and insulin rise following a meal than, say, uh, a baked potato. I think this is wrong. I think the chronic high insulin levels caused by insulin resistance is the problem. I think that's what's causing the overactivation of the enzyme that takes omega-6 in our diets and turns it into this radically hyper-inflammatory uh, fatty acid called arachidonic acid. And it appears that fructose, as you guys I'm sure are all aware of from all the stuff that I bombard you with, appears to be the most capable, along with caffeine and probably alcohol as well, in large quantities of inducing insulin resistance. Now, what makes this really interesting is that you need both a lot of omega-6 and probably a lot of fructose too to create this perfect nutritional storm of high chronic insulin levels and uh, a huge amount of arachidonic acid in the cells, which is why Barry Sears calls insulin plus omega-6 in the diet the perfect nutritional storm. They go together, they clash, and create something that is unachievable through any other dietary means. And I think this is probably true. What makes this interesting is that if you remove the omega-6 completely, even if you consume a lot of fructose, and even if your insulin levels are a little bit on the high side because of it, you're not going to get yourself into so much trouble. I think when insulin resistance really gets out of control is when you start becoming hyperinflammatory. The release of these cytokines increases cortisol, and cortisol triggers more and more insulin resistance. Uh, potentially, the inflammation can uh, do damage to the hypothalamus as well, causing leptin resistance. That's where uh, it's, it's communication center there. So there's you know a bunch of theories circulating, but but it seems clear that um, you know removing either fructose or omega six is probably going to give you a huge benefit to your health and is going to stop the massive overproduction of arachidonic acid at the cellular level. Now, you know I'm all about not combining fructose and polyunsaturated fat together, but I thought it was a good time to sit down and talk specifically about what can happen when you, uh, when you combine those two together. And I do think it's a vicious circle that ends with more cortisol, more, um, more uh, inflammation, more insulin resistance, and the whole thing perpetuates itself. So uh, anyways, that's some food for thought for this week. We'll get back at it next week. Thanks again. Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.